Hello and welcome back to a new video on my channel. I'm back home from my trip to La Palma. So tonight will be the first astrophotography session for me after my trip to La Palma. And in this video, I would like to talk about the best DSLR camera that you can use for astrophotography. So I've used multiple DSLR cameras over the last few years for astrophotography. And in this video, I would like to share the best DSLR camera, in my opinion, with you. I brought a bit of equipment with me to La Palma. Therefore, we have to put together the entire equipment first. So in this video, I would like to talk about the best DSLR camera, and I would like to capture a deep scale object with this camera tonight. So in the end, you can see an image I've captured with the best DSLR camera in my opinion. But first of all, we have to put together the entire equipment. But first of all, I would like to mention that this video is not sponsored and not being paid for it, and all products shown in this video were purchased by myself. So the basis of this entire astrophotography setup will be the HEQ5 Pro GoTo mount. It's a very reliable mount, and I would like to use that one for deep sky astrophotography. And now it's finally time to attach the telescope to the tracking mount. So as I have mentioned, I would like to attach the Ascar SQA55 telescope. So that's what we'll be doing right now. So let's attach the telescope to the tracking mount. So now the telescope is attached to the tracking mount. It looks quite good. So the next thing we have to do is to remove the dual shield and attach it back again, which might be quite helpful for tonight. That's what I'd like to do so. Here we go. So the next thing is um, the guiding system. So I would like to use the guiding system in this case as well. So the plan is to attach uh, this guide scope to this tracking mount. But before attaching the guiding system to this telescope, we need an adapter. That's why I have to attach the adapter first. So we need this adapter and we can just simply attach that one to the telescope like this, and then we have to secure it, and then we can attach uh, the guide scope to the telescope, like this. But now the guiding system is attached, now the only thing left is the Astro computer to control the entire setup, and then we'll attach the DSLR camera. So now the Ace IR Pro is attached to the telescope and now we can attach the dual shield back again to the telescope. So in the end we have to attach the cables but now it's time to talk about the best DSLR camera in my opinion that you can use for astrophotography. So in my opinion this is the best DSLR camera that you can use for astrophotography which is the Canon EOS 6DA. So this is the Astro modified version of the Canon EOS 6D. So I've used this camera multiple times for astrophotography and I even brought that one with me to La Palma. And I've captured one of my best images of the Milky Way with this camera. And I really like to use that camera for astrophotography because it has less noise compared to other DSLR cameras. And that is always very important because when using a dedicated astrophotography camera, these cameras are cooled, which means the sensor is cooled down, so which is which helps us to have less noise in our uh, images. And these DSLR cameras are not cooled. Therefore, it's very important that these cameras do perform quite good when, when it comes to noise. And I've used multiple cameras over the last few years. So the Canon EOS 450D, the Canon EOS 2000D, the Canon EOS 600D, and so a lot of cameras, you know. And this one is definitely the best camera when it comes to noise. And I've compared uh, the noise with of this camera with other DSLR cameras, and this one definitely performs quite good. Furthermore, this camera is a full frame camera, and generally you can say that full frame cameras do have less noise compared to uh, other cameras. For sure, that really depends on how old these cameras are, but generally speaking, these cameras do perform quite good. And I've used this camera multiple times, and it's definitely one of the best DSLR cameras I've ever used so far. In this case, I'm using the Astro modified version of this camera, which is a bit better for astrophotography since we can capture these H alpha regions easier because a filter is removed in this camera. So these normal DSLR cameras do have built-in filters that block the H alpha light. And most objects in night sky do have a lot of H alpha. Therefore, 
using an Astro modified DSLR camera is a big advantage in astrophotography. So in the end I'd like to talk about a few more details about this camera but now it's time to attach the camera to the telescope in order to see how good this DSLR camera actually is. So for attaching the camera we have to attach a few adapters um, to the telescope and to the camera. So first of all it's important to remove this adapter from the back of the telescope in order to be able to attach the camera to the telescope. And then we have to attach these adapters right at the back of the camera and it looks quite good. Then the next thing we have to do is attaching the camera to the telescope. So here we go. That's it. So now the telescope is ready for tonight's astrophotography session. So now the only thing left is to attach the cables, but I'm I'm not planning to show you how I, how I attach all the cables because I guess it's not that interesting because the main focus is on this DSLR camera. So tonight I would like to capture an object I've planned to capture for years now. I've planned to capture it last year and the year before and all the time I've captured other objects but tonight is finally time for me to capture this object the very first time. So actually I haven't captured that object before so it will be the first time for me to capture this object so I'm really interested in how good the image will be. So this camera is astro modified. I do have a perfect wide field telescope which is amazing and necessary because I would like to capture a big object in the night sky tonight but you will see the object later on. So this is actually everything I've planned to mention so far so see you later. Hello everyone and welcome to the part of this video where I plan to show you the single light frames I've captured. So here you can see in single light frame I've captured. So I've captured images of this object for two nights. So actually I've planned to collect a total exposure time of around 10 hours and therefore it was very important for me to capture this object over multiple nights and that's what I did. So this is a single light frame I've captured. So in this case I've used an ISO value of 3 1200 which is definitely quite good so the camera performed quite good at this ISO value. So I've used a uh, single exposure time in this case of 3 minutes so this image has a total exposure time of 3 minutes. So when zooming in you can see that the stars are perfectly round so over these two nights the guiding was perfect. So the stars were perfect and I checked all the images I've captured in Deep Sky Stacker. Um, just a few days ago and actually there were only a few images I had to delete. So in total there were only a few images I had to delete because um, the stars were not that round. So, but as you can see most images were very sharp and the images were, were very good and the stars were round so definitely I was able to use most of these images. So generally speaking I'm very happy with this image. So the very first night I collected five and a half hours of total exposure time and in the second night I collected six hours I guess which results in total exposure time of uh, around 11 hours which is quite good I guess. So this one has an exposure time of three minutes but in total I've collected 11 hours of total exposure time in the course of two nights. So as you know the Canon EOS 60A is a full frame camera and as you can see um, the stars to look perfectly round so the telescope is great but this video is more about the camera. So just when zooming in you can see um, this region right here which is I guess the most important region in this image. So you can see a bit of nebula right there, here as well and here as well. So when stacking this image later on you can see way more uh, structures in this object. So this region is definitely very interesting especially when doing wide field astrophotography. So, but this video is more about the Canon EOS 60A. So, as you can see, this camera performs very, very good when it comes to uh, capturing images of night sky. So, I've used a relatively high uh, IC value, I guess. I mean, you have to keep in mind that uh, I've captured this image during summer and the other temperatures are relatively high. So, definitely, this camera performs quite good even at higher IC values. So, a few weeks ago, when I was in La Palma, I've captured a uh, Tylum's video of the Milky Way as well and I've used an ISO value of 10,000 so you can see the Tylum's video right now and you can see that the camera performed quite good even at an ISO value of 10,000 which shows how good this camera actually is and I've used multiple cameras so far for astrophotography and for example when using the Canon EOS 600D uh, you do have 
way more noise. So definitely uh, the Canon EOS 60A is definitely one of the best cameras I've ever used when it comes to noise. And that is a very important aspect when planning to use these cameras for astral photography because these cameras are not cooled and therefore they usually do have more noise compared to these cooled dedicated astral photography cameras. And therefore noise is definitely a very important aspect that you have to keep in mind when planning to buy a DSLR camera for astral photography. So in this case, this camera performs definitely quite good. So as I have already mentioned in the beginning of this video, this camera is a full frame camera and it has 20.6 megapixels, which is, in my opinion, very, very good for astrophotography, especially for wide field astrophotography. So my plan was to mainly use this camera for wide field astrophotography. That's why I'm planning to use it in combination with the Oscar SQA55. And so far I was able to capture very good images with this camera. So for example, I've captured this image of the North America Nebula with this camera and the exposure time is not that long, so definitely this camera performs quite good even when only collecting a relatively short exposure time. So definitely this camera performs very good in deep sky astrophotography. But now it's finally time to show you the image I've captured in these two nights. Over the course of these two nights, I was able to collect a total exposure time of around 11 hours. After stacking and combining all of these images, I was able to create this image. So this image was created by stacking multiple images, so each single image has a total exposure time of 40 minutes, which results in total exposure time of around 11 hours. In total, I'm very happy with this image, but I definitely plan to collect more exposure time this summer or next summer in order to have a longer exposure time, which would help me to create an even better image of this object. If you have any further questions, definitely feel free to ask me down below in the comments and I will definitely help you. And if this video was interesting and helpful to you, I would really, really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching and until next time, clear skies, Felix.